Hi, I'm Tom Miggett from Tom Miggett Photography. Over the years I've talked to you a little bit about flash photography, but this year I'm really taking a deep dive. And we talked about the different types of flashes, uh, about, I think two years ago or a year ago. And then I explained to you the different ways of triggering your flash if you're not using your flash on the camera. We saw we can use a um, radio trigger, an infrared trigger, or even a second flash to trigger uh, the slave one. But there is one thing that I never covered, and that is how to actually set up your flash, how to um, set it up to parameter it. And this is what we're going to see today. So to do that, what I'm going to first going to give you a, a, a little bit of a theory, and then we're going to do an experiment here to validate every argument that I'm going to uh, give you in the theory part. You see, I'm going to be talking about the uh, speed light here, but half of what I'm saying actually applies to studio strobe and continuous light. The reason I'm talking about speed light is because I believe that this is a type of flash that you are most likely going to buy if you start in flash photography because it's economic. And also because truth be told, this is the flash that I actually use. Uh, I only shoot with a speed light. So speed lights, you can find three types of modes uh, on the speed lights, on modern ones, but we are going to talk about two modes only. And it's going to be manual and TTL. The third mode being multi or stroboscopic. I believe it's a total different ball game and it would deserve an episode just for itself, which I will do at later time. So manual and TTL, we're going to see the pros and cons of each. Manual mode, as the name implies, is basically a mode where you are going to set the flash output value manually. Um, and the output value is actually expressed in fraction. So it will go, uh, most of the time, start as low as 1 over 128, and then it goes up 1 over 64, 1 over 32, 1 16th, 1 8th, a quarter, half power, full power. You may find um, old models that will not go as low as 128. You may actually go as low as 64, even 32. Um, but the good news is that all speed light will have a manual mode, and that's already an advantage. When it comes to um, real advantage of using such a mode is the consistency of light. Once you have um, set up your flash output, as long as the distance between your flash and your subject doesn't change, then your exposure on your subject will always be the same. And that is a great, great asset. The inconvenient of, uh, that we can we could find to a manual flash is actually figuring out what the correct output value should be. And um, you basically have two ways of doing it. The first one would be a try and error, uh, similar to any type of exposures that you do on landscape photography, for example. Uh, so you take a shot and then you see if it's underexposed or overexposed, and then you basically increase or decrease the value of your flash. That's one way of doing it. Then you have another way, which I believe is the best way and is the quickest way and that is actually using a flash meter uh, because you don't even need to do a test shot you basically measure the light and bingo you get your um, flash set up and your camera set up perfectly even before shooting uh, but we'll talk about the flash meter in either the very next episode or the, the episode right after so that's pretty much for uh, manual f uh, mode uh, and bear in mind every time I talk about manual uh, mode here I'm not talking about the manual mode of your camera uh, of course you can set the camera to manual mode and the flash to manual mode, but it's not a requirement. You could shoot aperture priority mode on your camera and still use uh, your uh, flash in a manual mode. The um, second mode is TTL. TTL stands for through the lens metering. And you can find it under the name ETTL for Canon and ITTL for Nikon. Why? Because they obviously had to be different, uh, but the concept is the same and it's very, very smart when you think of it. Basically, no matter how you actually trigger your flash, you when you press the button on your um, camera, it will trigger your flash and the first uh, light will be emitted and brighten your subject. The camera will take a reading of that subject and send the information back to your flash, telling your flash exactly how much power it believes it should it should throughout on your subject to get a correct exposure and as soon as the flash receives that information it will trigger it will basically emit a second burst and that will be the final one and at, during that burst the camera will actually take the exposure and this whole process that I just described to you 
basically takes place in thousands of a second. It's extremely quick, so quick in fact that the very first shot, the first um, burst that the camera throws to take the uh, meter reading, you don't even see it. Um, so it's a very smart process and by doing that you don't need to actually think about the uh, flash output value. Uh, the camera will do it for you, just similar in a similar way uh, that the camera would actually tell you if you do a landscape shot whether you're going to be over or underexposed, the same way. And to some extent, even to the same way, it will um, sometimes not give you the result that you expect. Let me give you an example. You're doing a landscape shot and you're first going to take a picture very closely at the bottom of a tree. And uh, you're zooming in and you take that exposure and it's a correct exposure. You lock those settings, especially let's say if you're in manual mode, you lock those settings. Aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed, everything is locked. Now you want to take a picture of the overall scene. You're not necessarily moving, but you're zooming out with your lens. You're changing the focal lens. And suddenly you include a part of the sky. And you take that shot, but suddenly your sky is blown out. So your exposure is no longer good. It's overexposed. And you see, that will apply to the same way uh, in flash photography when you use TTL. And in the same way as if you were shooting with aperture priority mode and you would use why it's called the exposure compensation tool or feature that you find where you basically tune it down or tune it up the exposure um, you can do this with TTI it's called flash exposure compensation and that actually leads us to the um, first inconvenience of uh, using such a mode is that the camera is not as smart as you and so it doesn't know exactly what you're shooting and when it does the metering the metering might be off and so you're going to have to use this flash exposure compensation to compensate and get the proper exposure. So in terms of saving times, well, sometimes it turns out that it's going to be as long, if not longer, than if you actually shot in the, manu the flash manual mode. Um, the second uh, inconvenient that I can think of is about um, the TTL mode itself. You know, you don't find it on all the speedlights. Um, modern speedlights will offer it, but not all of them. And um, the, the one that do actually cost more than the one that don't. And you can find, as I said earlier, you can find a cheap uh, speed light uh, that is 10 years old and it will work fantastically well, uh, but it doesn't do TTL. And then if you actually go and do off camera flash, um, you need to think about the way you're actually going to trigger your flash. It needs to understand the TTL mode, whether it's with a cable or if it's with a radio trigger or whatnot. And that adds a layer of complexity, which obviously has a cost. So um, you can find some cheap radio triggers, uh, and but watch out because they may not do TTL. And if you don't care about TTL, so be it. But if you do, you've got to pay attention to that. So that's basically the pros and cons. I hear a lot about uh, TTL being inconsistent, that you could take 10 shots and the 10 shots are not going to be uh, the same. And I disagree with this. It's not true. I've done the experiment. Um, but there is a caveat. You see, as long as, and I try, I, I usually call it my three factors in flash photography, my subject, my camera, and my flash. As long as those three factors do not move and they stay the same, then you can take TTL and do 10 shots, 10, 100 shots. It will always be the same, unless obviously you, do, you take too many shots and your flash just run out of power. But that's a totally different issue. Um, so TTL in that way is very reliable, but as we're going to see in a second, as soon as you change one of the three factors, then you are at the mercy of your camera metering system. And it's not as smart as you, despite what you may think. So uh, let's do um, the, the test. So because it's late, it's about 2 a.m. and I could not have my model uh, coming over at this hour. Uh, so I had to find uh, something that would act as a model and that would actually make sense at 2 a.m. And I went for a bottle of whiskey. Um, so this is a bottle of Lafroig, a Scottish whiskey, Peter whiskey, fantastic. And um, it will do just fine. So I'm going to the camera now and uh, to my computer. And I'm going to start now um, recording the screen so you guys can actually see it. Um, and I'm tethered. So this is the 5D Mark III, um, I'm just waking it up and I've already set up my flash. I'm going to start with shooting manual and I believe the flash is on. 
it is. And I've already measured the light, so I'm going to get a correct exposure here. In terms of um, the camera itself, it's using the sync speed, which is 200 of a second, ISO 100 being the lowest one, and my aperture value is f5, and that is because I needed to get a correct exposure. Um, so let's, uh, let's start. I hope the tethering is going to uh, work. I'm basically going to focus on the label. Okay, now it's telling me that it's busy, so let me turn off the camera. We're live, we're shooting live, so... Um, Alright, okay, so now it works. Um, sorry about this, this is live, as I said, so now I'm going to focus on the subject. And you should see on your screen right now, it's going to appear, it's a correct exposure. The bottle is well exposed and I am actually in Lightroom in a developed module uh, and I've actually enabled the uh, burned um, uh, flag. So basically what you see here in red is basically uh, blown out. And I'm shooting JPEG for once and the reason why I'm shooting JPEG is just I wanted to make sure that the result that I get in the camera is exactly the same that we see in uh, on the computer and I didn't want to have camera row uh, doing some interpretation of a raw file which has more leverage when it comes to exposure. So um, as you can see it's correctly exposed and we just have a little bit burn here on the uh, reflection of the speed light. And so I'm basically going to step away now from uh, my subject and I can zoom out uh, a little bit. And you'll see, um, I, I, moved, I moved about and the exposure is exactly the same. Let me zoom in, you can see we still have, it's white, it's, it's nice and we have a little bit of red on the reflection here. But it's exactly the same exposure. Now what if I actually come right next to my line, so I'm going to be really uh, close to my subject and I'm zooming in. And you'll see, correctly exposed again. This is extremely reliable way of getting uh, a flash exposure. So I think you understood the concept here. I move about, I'm not fixed, and as long as the distance between my light source and my subject remains the same, the exposure will remain the same all the time. So let's now move to TTL, and I'm gonna change it straight from my uh, trigger here. So I'm on TTL, and I make sure that my flash compensation is actually at zero. And sign. Focusing on the bottle. Oh god, oh god, you'll see what we get. So here TTL, as I said, it's automatic mode. The camera actually figured out the exposure for me. And as you can see, there's a lot of red here, which means that basically it's overexposed. There was too much power thrown out by the um, flash, uh, despite this smart system of communicating with my camera. So now I need to do some guesswork. I need to figure out how much I need to compensate to underexpose this to get a proper exposed image. So my guess is I'm gonna go for at least one stop. So it's one stop and I think it's almost two stops here. So I'm gonna do two third. So one stop and two third. And let's try to do the same shot again. And that seems to be okay, that seems to be good. Um, so, yeah, you see we get the same exposure as before when we were in manual. So it's correctly exposed on the sticker and just uh, the reflection is a little bit hot. So now I'm gonna step away from my subject again, zoom out a little bit, and let's see what we get. Do we get a correct exposure? It looks like it. It looks like it. There's no red, just a little bit on the on the reflection. So this is this seems to be good. I think we on the right track. We just it was just that first shot that was wrong. And let's let's continue. So I'm coming here very close to my bottle. And that's quite interesting now. Because I didn't change anything. I just went closer to my subject. And now it's actually underexposed. So, uh, how surreal. And I'm going to go in the same position, but instead of zooming in, I'm going to zoom out and see if I get the same thing. So I'm zooming out at 24 millimeter. And now, 
24 millimeter, it's actually correctly exposed. So maybe it was a one-off. So let's try again, and I'm zooming again. again. And you see, it wasn't a one-off. By changing the focal lens of, on my camera, on my lens basically, I changed the exposure settings. The camera is being fooled and it's giving me some weird flash output and the result is actually inconsistent. So this is exactly what I wanted to illustrate. Manual, I could move about. I could go away, I could get closer. The exposure was exactly the same. As soon as I have to rely on the, on the camera, to um, find the right flash output, then I rely on the metering system. And the metering system is not as smart as I am. It doesn't know exactly what I want to take. So when I zoom out, when I zoom out, I've got a broader scene with some shadows, I have some dark areas of the stool, and even maybe the softbox side. And, but when I zoom in, I basically have to suck up, with it, which is pretty much dominant uh, white. And so the exposure is different. And that's where it goes wrong. So just like when you actually do landscape um, shot and you rely on your metering system of the camera, but you know, you know how the camera will behave and then you start using, even sometimes maybe, depending on your experience, you can even start using the exposure compensation even before you do your first shot. Well, people who actually use TTL a lot, constantly, will appreciate the scene and will be able to actually figure out how much flash exposure compensation it's needed maybe sometimes before it takes the first shot. But this is not my case. So what do I do? What do I recommend you guys do? Well, it depends. You say like everything in photography, it depends. Uh, it depends what you do. If you do uh, studio work or if you go outside and you want to really have full control over how much light is being used, and especially here, we're in a very um, simple uh, setup with only one light. What if you start having a second or third or fourth light here? You want to make sure that you control all the lights and the ratios and everything. And we talk about we'll talk about this in the future episodes. Um, then manual mode is the way to go because you will know that no matter what you do the flash will always throw the same amount of power and as you saw I like to move about if I'm with a model here I don't want to have to stick and almost use a tripod and not moving at all I like to change my my field of view I want to change I want to zoom in I want to zoom out I want to go lower higher and so on I want that freedom without having to think about the light changing but if you actually cover an event, like a wedding at the reception, or covering any type of event, where the, the, what is the most important thing is to actually capture the action in, and not capturing some, um, doing some creative work with the shadows and the light, then in that case, go TTL. Let the camera figure out um, and just, you know, brighten the scene so you don't have to use ISO above 6400. In that case, yes, go TTL, and I go TTL that way as well. Um, so I hope that answer uh, some of your questions. I hope you found this informative. There's, as usual, details on my blog. And let me know in the comments. Uh, if you do flash photography, if you use speed light, uh, what do you go? Do you use TTL at all? Do you use manual? and tell me everything in the comments and if you like the video give me a thumb all right until next time this is Tommy God saying if you like it well capture it and don't forget if you do flash photography you're better off just taking that flash of the camera and do some remote triggering the result will speak for itself ciao